morning, beloveds. Okay. All right. Um, I'm a little discombobulated this morning because I opted to go to the chiropractor instead of a bike ride, uh, which, considering, and he gave me some advice that hopefully will help, um, but I had to look him straight in the eye and go, my husband's a Yankee. He doesn't own any of those. <laughs> those kind of socks. So now we're on the hunt for basketball socks. So, um, yay. All right. It is September 28th. Our title is I Receive Because I Ask in Faith. And our quote is, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. And that is from Galatians 5.22. Uh, ask and ye shall receive. This is one of the most wonderful statements ever uttered. It implies that there is a power which can and will honor your request. But it is only as you let go of the lesser that you can take hold of the greater. Only as you drop confusion that you can entertain peace. Only as you transcend doubt and fear that you can be lifted up to the hilltops of the inner life. In asking... You must identify yourself with the greatness of spirit. Permit your consciousness through faith to rise to, the, to a greater and broader realization of that divine presence which is always delivering itself to you. Say, through the quiet contemplation of the omni-action of spirit, I learn to look quietly and calmly upon every false condition seeing through it to the other side of the invisible reality which molds, conditions, and recreates all of my affairs after a more nearly divine pattern. I know that my world transmutes every energy into constructive action, producing health, harmony, happiness, and success. I maintain my position as a divine being here and now. I know that in this consciousness of reality is the supply for my every need, physical, mental, or spiritual. I accept that supply in deepest gratitude. As I am filled with the reality, I permit it to flow into my world of thought and action, knowing that it brings peace and harmony and order all around me. I have limitless faith in the unconquerable presence, the perfect law, and the divine action. All right. I receive because I ask in faith. So here's the thing. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. That's just the truth of the, the matter. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. So what you have to do is ask. And that's not just in talking to God. That's in absolutely everything. The divine, uh, you know, when you want something, you have to ask for it. Um, and then after, after you become willing to ask for it, then you also have to become willing to accept it. And two, you also have to believe that you, that the answer will be yes. So that, I think that's the willingness to accept. Um... And honestly, for women, that's kind of hard. That's, and it's hard for people who are fiercely independent and um, any of us with anxiety issues. <laughs> Asking for things is hard. Um, and then believing that we will get them is hard. Uh, so it's something that we work on. And honestly, I'm more okay with asking God for things than I am other people. So, uh, and partly because God has never failed me. Other people, well, yeah. <laughs> but that also requires me to look at the quality of the people around me and go, hmm, okay. Um, so, I mean, not currently. I've got good people around me now. But... 
Yeah. And then he also goes into the, you have to be willing to let go of to get. And it, it reminds me of the old story of they put treats. Oh, no, it's a monkey trap. The way you trap a monkey is you put treats in a coconut shell and you make the hole in the coconut shell just big enough for them to get, to get their open hand in. But once they close their hands around the treat, then they can't get their closed hand out. And then you've got them. So, uh, because if they're not willing to give up the treat in the, um, the coconut shell, then they, they then they're going to give up, depending on what they're going to do with the monkeys, <laughs> it, which frequently they would eat them. So then the monkeys give up their lives. So it's like, what are you, are you willing to give up the treat in the moment for the long term? And so are you willing to give up compute confusion for peace? Are you willing to give up, you know, f doubt and fear for the divine? Um, don't, don't, don't get caught holding, don't get caught holding on to something that isn't going to serve you in the long run. Okay. So it's like sometimes we have to be willing to open our hands and let go so we can withdraw our hands from the trap we've been in and, and, and get going. So those are, those are my two things today. One, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. And two, um, we have to be willing to let go of lesser to get greater. So I ask, I receive because I ask in faith. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. And that is Galatians 5.22. I suggest you go grab your um, whatever copy of the Bible you have. Because I'm betting long so there's a different translation, translation for long-suffering. Uh, because these are qualities of God. Love, peace, joy, gentleness, goodness, faith. Long-suffering, there's another word for it. I can't remember the name of it. Right, the, the other word for it right now. Uh, it might be patient. I'm betting long-suffering is patient. Which sounds a whole lot better than long-suffering. Alright. Ask and ye shall receive. That is a direct quote from the Bible. I believe that is a direct quote from Jesus. This is one of the most wonderful statements ever uttered. It implies that there is a power which can and will honor your request can and will honor your request. So you gotta be willing to ask and you gotta be willing to accept because spirit, that's what spirit wants. Spirit, the law literally is awaiting your request. What is it that you want? The law is literally waiting for that. The law moves into action when you make when you make that request. And the more power you put behind it, which is what we call emotion, then you know that the more the law is going to respond to that. Which means if you use positive emotions or negative emotions. So if you are complaining about something, the law goes, oh, well, there's a lot of emotion there. There's a lot of power there. This must be what the person really wants. Beware of that. Law doesn't judge. Law just answers. So, uh, but it is only as you let go of the lesser that you can take hold of the greater. That's why I was talking about the monkey trap. You got to let go of. And you've got to let go of the, the idea that the answer is going to be no even if you ask. Okay? If you don't ask, the answer is always no. If you do ask, the answer still might be no. It might be not at this time. Or it might be yes. But you got to be willing to ask. And if the answer is no, then you look and go, all right, well, what about my request was not in alignment with the divine nature? And then realign your request. It doesn't mean that you can't have what you want. It just may mean that the way that what you have asked for isn't quite in alignment and you want to relook at that. Revisit what it is that you want. My biggest thing is, is when you when you are asking for something, um, you, the two questions you want to ask is who does it benefit and who does it hurt? Okay. 
if it benefits nobody than you, but other than you, but it hurts no one, then ask for it. If it benefits everybody and hurts no one, that's even better. If it benefits a few people and hurts people, then that's where you're going. That's that's where the law's gonna go, or that's where God's gonna go. No, that's an ego request. All right. So, uh, only as you drop confusion can you entertain peace. Only, and, and that dropping the confusion, knowing who you are. All right? Then you enter the peace of knowing who you are. Only as you transcend doubt and fear that you can, that you can be lifted up to the hilltops of the inner life. In asking, you must identify yourself with the greatness of spirit. In asking, you must identify yourself with the greatness of spirit. You must know who you are. You must go to the core of your being, to the divine spark that you are, and make that request. And I would say if you are ashamed to go to the divine spark and ask to make your request, there are two reasons. One, you have not accepted who you are. So you feel like you are asking for something that you are not worthy for, okay? That's something we can work on. Or you are asking for something that you don't really want. So if there is any shame or hesitancy in asking for what you want, go back and ask yourself that. And if the answer is you don't feel like you're worthy, then let me remind you who you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are absolutely worthy. You are worthy of all of the fruits of the Spirit. You are worthy of love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Don't pray for patience, though, because if you pray for patience, God gives you lots of opportunities to practice it. I should know. <laughs> I get to practice faith, pa patience all the time. Uh, all right. In asking... Okay, so... Permit your consciousness through faith to rise to a greater and broader realization of that divine presence, which is always delivering itself to you. It delivers itself to you through you because you are it. You are divine. All right. You are made of divine stuff. You were made by the divine. So the divine presence is always eager to be more fully you. So on to the power statement, treatment, mantra. Please feel free to use these words as your own. And if there's any word that doesn't ring for you, feel free to change it. I promise you, Ernest is okay with that. Say, through the quiet contemplation of the omni-action of spirit, I learn to look quietly and calmly upon every false condition, seeing through it to the other side of the invisible reality, which molds, conditions, recreates all of my affairs after a more nearly divine pattern. All right. So if you are looking at a situation and you're not see what, sure what you're seeing, what you're looking at, this would be a good sentence to use. I learn to look quietly and calmly through every false condition. It's like when you bump up against something and it's not working right, then this is what you say to yourself. I'm going to look through the false condition. I'm going to see the reality back of it. I'm going to see the divine pattern. And when I see the divine pattern, the divine pattern will reassert itself in my affairs. I know that my word transmutes every energy into constructive action. I know. That my word, your word, transmutes every energy into constructive action. You can change what's going on using the energy in the room. Producing health, harmony, happiness, and success. I maintain my position as a divine being here and now. Know who you are. I know that in this consciousness of reality is the supply for my every need, physical, mental, or spiritual. And I accept that supply in deepest gratitude. What I need is right here, right now, right where I am. 
I am willing to accept it. All right. So one, I have to recognize that it's here. And two, I have to be willing to accept it. As I am filled with the reality, I permit it to flow into my world of thought and action, knowing that it brings peace and harmony and order all around me. I have limitless faith in the unconquerable presence, the perfect law and divine action. That's a really powerful last statement. So our mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to identify ourselves with the greatness of spirit. Yep, no question. As soon as I saw that line, I was like, I know what the mission today is. We want to identify ourselves with the greatness of spirit because that is the spirit within us. It is the spirit that made us. It is the spirit that we are made from. It is the spirit that animates us. Identify yourself with the greatness of spirit. Don't play small. Don't play small. Because you are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased always and forever. Know that. Live it. Act it. How does a beloved child of God act? With peace, with joy, with harmony, with happiness. The beloved child of God is a blessing because the beloved child of God is an island of calm. It's an island of strength. It's an island of peace. So when you are acting as that, then you are being your true self. And that doesn't mean that you can't get angry. And that doesn't mean that you can't be sad. Because those are natural, normal emotions. It means that you work through those emotions, that you ride them out, and you go back to being who you are. All right. I'm also going to encourage you, as I always do, to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Today, that looked like going to the chiropractor instead of going for a bike ride. I needed it. It was good. And now we are going to get, now that I'm back in alignment, <laughs> we'll get back to engaging our mind and body. So whatever it is that you need to do to be loving, kind, and com compassionate to yourself, and sometimes that is self-care. Actually, it's always self-care, but sometimes it's like direct self-care of the body. And sometimes it's having a cup of tea. Sometimes it is calling a friend. Whatever it is that you need to do. To be loving, kind, and compassionate with yourself because you deserve it. You deserve your own loving, kind, compassion. It also makes it a more permanent habit. It also makes it a default habit. It also creates a bank so that when things get a little rough, you have a bank to draw on. And you have plenty to share. All right. I also do encourage you to do something um to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like today. Um, I will figure it out some over the day, but I spend all day on my feet, so I'm going to engage that mind and the body. Um, we are getting really close to uh, closing our location, so I got some cleaning to do. All right, and then drink plenty of water. Go get a face full of sun. It's going to be weather like stormy weather for the next few days. I don't know how much sun we're going to see, but take advantage of it when you see it. Um, and open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven now. Right here, right now. Always. It's, it's always around you. And so it is a matter of seeing it. It is a matter of seeing it and finding very visible, very tangible, very huggable examples of your heaven because this was this one's one of mine all right and she's like don't pick me up but she purrs and that purr that purrs heaven that purrs heaven all right beloveds um it's tuesday i'm not sure that there's anything going on in particular on at creative life today 
So you can always email info at Creative Life. Get on the um, the email list, and then that'll let you know because I don't always know. And if not, check us out on all the social me social medias. There's plenty of stuff up on the YouTube. Uh, on the Facebook, on the Instagram. Oh, God help us, we have a TikTok now. <laughs> as soon as I find out what that is, I do need to ask. There's a board meeting tomorrow, so I'll find out for sure tomorrow about the TikTok. Um, and I am the Running Rev Ryan on all three platforms. So check them out. Have a great day, an amazing day, a fantastic day, a wonderful day. I need some new adjectives. Have a good day. And if that is too much pressure, Simply have a day, but know that you're loved always. All right, beloveds, I will see you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And do be aware, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. All right, I will see you next time.